Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Here we have an old homemade light box. Now I think this was used for photography, uh, for viewing negatives perhaps. It's quite a vintage one. It's made out of timber. It's nicely painted with a thick enamel paint. It's got a couple of old fluoros in here. The wiring looks a little dodgy and it actually has old Bakelite switches and an out or an input sort of block there. Now, it didn't have a cord when I got it, I and it was very filthy, and I should have filmed when I first got it to show you. I think the rule of thumb now is I'll film absolutely everything as it comes in, and then if things turn out to be worthwhile, I'll continue the video. Anyway, what I'm going to do is bring it back to life, and for what purpose, you may ask? Well, how many of people have ever tried to photograph bottles? Uh, most of you know I'm a bit of an antique bottle collector, uh, sometimes I sell them on eBay or, or just want to photograph them to record my collection. And even though they may show up quite well in the video here, they're extremely hard to photograph to show the embossing. You get reflection and shadows and, and all sorts of things. Uh, especially clear ones. Clear ones, it's very hard. So what we're going to do is make, use this light box as a backlight to photograph bottles. Now you can make your own very easily and I'll show you how this one works out so you get an idea of the results. However, the problem is, this is how it came. I don't know if it had some frosted glass on the top. It does have a little insert here, but we need some sort of diffuser. And if only I had something in my yard that I could dig out a diffuser from. Aha. Uh -huh. An LCD TV, usually I wouldn't bother scrapping these, they've only got one small board in it. But I'm going to pull this one apart because behind that screen there will be a couple of diffusers that will work nicely. So let's get to and scrap that out. As I mentioned, there's very little scrap value in these TVs. The power board's not worth it for me. Uh, I'll take the, the main logic board. It'll just go into mid-grade boards. And these are the speakers. So, and there is a little T-Con board under there. But very, very low weight and low value for scrappers. But we'll keep going because that's not what I want. I've unclipped the front bezel from around the so uh, side of the TV. And I've just got to undo some screws around the little metal brackets that hold the screen assembly together and we should be able to access those diffusers. Now the metal bracket and a plastic retainer need to unclip from the assembly and we should be able to separate the screens. And here we go. We don't want to really want to break the screen up because we want to reassemble it to get rid of the whole TV. Okay, we'll keep all those screens and diffusers just to see what we're going to use. We're not going to disturb the LCD panel. We'll put the TV back together, then we can get rid of it. So I've saved these two uh, screens out of the TV. One's a nice opaque one, but it's a little bit sort of, it won't support itself in the light box. The other one's a fairly thick piece of like polycarbonate, like a Perspex. It has a bit of a pattern on it, but it's too transparent and it won't, diffuse the light properly so I'm going to put the two together probably just with some double-sided tape and then I'll cut them down to suit our light box. The thicker sheet cut down very well I just used a wood saw and it works fine. Uh, you do have to be careful it's quite brittle uh, so you don't want to cut so that the last bit is a part that you want and then this other long side I actually cut halfway and then because it's transparent I could turn it over and still see the line and I cut back the other way and that way the little split was in the middle and it pretty well followed the line so you'd never pick it. So that's now cut the size. We'll just check that it fits in the light box but that should work well. I'll just clean the burrs up on the sides and we should be right to go. I'll round up some double sided tape and the other piece is very flexible. We can actually cut that with scissors and we'll stick that on. Then we can assemble it and see how it works. That piece fits in there nicely. I think you can tell from the reflection that it's dropped in. 
nice beautiful neat fit and I think it was a dumb idea to suggest using double-sided tape because we would see lines through it from where the tape was so I reckon I should be able to just sit this in there I've trimmed that up with scissors and that fits neatly now too and this extra frame will hold them together and hopefully that white piece is rigid enough to to stay there with the support of the piece behind it so it looks really looks the part I'll take it inside and we'll plug it in and see how it's going to perform and hopefully when I stand it up vertical it, it stays together okay so the good news is that it appears to be self-supporting the uh, that top sheet is uh, staying there without sagging nicely the frame sort of pushes in fairly firm so it uh, it won't fall out which is great uh, so I'll turn it on and see how it looks. I've just got these bottles here on a piece of wood to bring them up to the right height. And we'll flick the switch. And the fluoros will flicker into life. There we go. Now they're not very bright. Let's try turning the main lights off here. Okay. So that's working. You can see the embossing on those bottles pretty well. Uh, but the dark green one's a bit dark. So our fluoros aren't really bright enough. Probably that opaque piece of plastic was a bit too opaque. But uh, yeah, that look, it's got potential. I think what I'll do is I'll replace those fluoro tubes with some LED ones. Um, not only will they come on instantly rather than flickering, but uh, they should provide a bit better light and we should get a better result here. And they might even provide a, a more whiter light. This has a bit of a yellowy hue to it. So we'll chase up some LED tubes and we'll install them and see how it looks then. And after a couple of weeks, I have my LED tubes. I've just put the one in the bottom. Uh, you can see they're a whiter light. And if I go closer, you'll probably find the fluoro strobes a bit. Yeah, but it should be a, a better light to um, shine through the diffuser. We'll replace the other one now and see how it looks. And here we have the same three bottles with the LED backlights. I'm liking the uh, the marble bottle in the middle, the cod, it's looking good. The clear one is pretty good if you get the right angles. You can see the embossing really start to stand out. Uh, sometimes it's better having a darker object actually next to the clear ones because it introduces some shadows in the right places anyway you can experiment with that the darker one's still a little bit too dark we can see the embossing it's a foster's brewing company bottle but perhaps that opaque plastic is just a little bit too much probably we should have a couple of different options one for doing clear glass and one for doing dark bottles Anyway, best you have an experiment yourself. Uh, every TV that I've scrapped, uh, there seems to be all sorts of different diffusers. There's different, uh, certainly different sizes, obviously, from the size of the TV. But there's lots of different styles of diffusers. So you might find one that works better for you. I'm, uh, I've got to photograph some clear bottles for some eBay auctions. So I'm happy enough with this uh, setup here. And this light box is going to be very handy. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you got a couple of ideas out of that. There's certainly other ways of doing it, but this is a, an easy way to photograph bottles. Uh, just find a backlight really works well. Catch you in the next video. Bye.